Hello everyone, and welcome to the flip lesson on how to solve two-step equation word problems. As you watch this video, I encourage you to pause it as many times as you need to, and rewind it until you learn the content. I also encourage you to take notes on what you see. What I'm going to show you again is how to solve a word problem using a two-step equation. But before we do that, let's take a look quickly and review how we solve two-step equations. I always want you to think of the balance beam that you see at the bottom. The balance beam is a good way to remember that when you're dealing with an equation, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. So let's look at this example, 4n minus 7 equals 9. I want to solve for n. So what I need to think of is what are the inverse operations I can use to get n by itself. Well, if I look at n, and I create a column about what's being done to n, I see that it is being multiplied by 4, and then 7 is being subtracted from that. In order to solve this equation, I need to do the opposite of that in the opposite order. So I create an undo column. And if I read from the bottom up and change the operations, I know I have to add 7 and then divide by 4. If I follow that undo column and I do both of those things to both sides, I will solve the equation successfully. So let's start with the addition of 7. The first thing I do is add 7 to both sides of the equal sign. So I locate the minus 7 and I add 7 to that. But if I do that to the left side, I have to do that to the right side. And that gives me a new equation. What I have left on the left side is 4n, and on the right side, I have 16. So if you look at the balance beam at the bottom, instead of having 4n minus 7 on the left and 9 on the right, I now have 4n and 16. Notice I've added 7 to both sides, so the balance remains the same. So I took care of the first step. Now we need to divide both sides by 4. I show that by drawing the fraction bar. And I get n equals 4. So I divided both sides by 4, so I'm now left with n and 4. So my value of n is 4. So what that leads us to is now we can use two-step equations when we deal with word problems. Let's take a look at an example. What I want you guys to keep, what I want you guys to keep in mind is that when we're solving word problems with one unknown, you're going to follow these four steps every single time. The most important thing I need you to think about is that you have to be able to identify what is the one thing that is unknown. If you can identify that, then you can figure this out. So that's step one. Identify the unknown and define it with a variable. Let's read the problem together, and then let's see if we can figure out what the unknown is. Syed goes to the fair and buys two passes, one for unlimited rides and one for a meal. Each pass costs the same price. There should be a period there. I apologize. He also pays the price of admission, which is $23. In all, he spent $50. What is the cost of one pass? So pause the video a second and see if you can figure out the unknown and then click play. So I hope you figured out that the unknown is the cost of one pass. So that's my unknown. So what I need to do, according to step one, is define that unknown with a variable. A lot of the times we use the variable x. So I'm going to let x represent the cost of one pass. That's what x is going to mean in the equation I set up. So I took care of step one. Step two is to set up an appropriate equation that models the situation. And that's usually the hardest part, is figuring out what equation I can use to solve this problem. Well, here's what I know. I know he buys two passes. So the total cost of all the passes 
is 2 times the cost. So that would be 2x. In addition, he pays the price of admission, which is $23. So in addition to the passes, which cost the same price, I'm also adding that $23. Here's the important part. In all, he spent $50. Right there, that in all is a key word or a key term I want you to look for. In every word problem, there's usually a word or a term somewhere that tells you where the equal sign should go. And in here, it's in all. So in all, those two things, the, the two passes and the cost of admission, cost $50. So that takes care of step two. I've set up the equation. Now I'm going to solve the equation and make sure I answer the question. Sometimes the question I get doesn't ask me for the answer I get from the equation. Sometimes it asks me to interpret my answer. But in this case, it's pretty straightforward. So let's solve the equation. The first thing I need to do here is subtract the 23 from both sides. And when I do that, I'm left with 2 times x equals 27. And then next, I have to divide both sides by 2. And when I divide 27 by 2, I get 13.5. But now I have to answer the question. The question asks, what is the cost of one pass? Saying 13.5 is not giving me a cost. For example, if you have $13.50 in your pocket and someone asks you how much money you have, you don't say, I have 13.5. They'll look at you like you're ridiculous. You tell them exactly what you have. I have 13.5, which means the cost of one pass is $13.50. So I've solved the equation and I've answered the question. Now step four is to make sure that that answer checks out. Well, let's see if it does. We'll do a quick check off to the side. So remember that he buys two passes. So if I take 1350 and I multiply that by two, and then I add the cost of admission, it should equal $50. Well, let's see. By order of operations, I do 2 times 13.50, oh, and I get 27. I bring down the plus 23. I'm going to add 27 and 23. I get 50. That means I've solved it correctly. So I hope after watching this, you have a better understanding of how to use a two-step equation to solve word problems. Now I want you to go on the website and fill out the Google form to rate your understanding of the video. Thank you for watching.